After building a career as a labor attorney going up against giants like Uber, Lyft, Amazon, Shannon Liz Reardon challenged Ed Markey for his Senate seat in 2019. She later withdrew from the race, but she is back and she joins me now. Shannon, it's good to see you. Good to see you, Jim. Why are you the best qualified person for the job? Jim, I have spent my career fighting the toughest battles, taking on the biggest challenges against some of America's largest corporations. I have fought for workers. I have won. And I'm excited to take this work to the people as the next Massachusetts Attorney General. Anything you do differently than how Maura Healy has done it in her time in office? Uh, Mara's been a terrific AG. I am very excited to expand on the excellent work she's done. Um, I am excited to double down on fighting polluters who are destroying our environment, corporate bad actors who are taking advantage of workers and consumers, fighting for reproductive rights, and making sure that our economy is a fair economy that is including everyone. There were a couple of stories in the Globe right after she announced for governor saying that she had not been aggressive enough in his, her pursuit of public corruption. Uh, she, on our radio show, said she thought that criticism was totally unfair and belied by her record. Do you think the criticism is fair? Uh, one of the incredibly important responsibilities of the attorney general is to ensure that our laws are enforced, that all of our laws are enforced, and that includes the laws against public corruption, um, our democracy depends on the attorney general being a strong advocate for the people, and, and that's exactly what I will ensure happens when I'm attorney general. Has she been a strong enough advocate on those issues? I think Mara has done a great job in a lot of areas. I think there is more that can be done in many of those areas, and I'm looking forward to taking on and building on the work she's done. Um, uh, worker protection in particular, there is so much more that can and needs to be done to ensure that we get money back into in people's pockets. And that's what I've spent my career doing and succeeding at. Speaking of money in people's pockets, virtually every time I have uh, talked to Maura Healy while she's been in office, she's referred to the position as being the people's lawyer. So money in pockets. Billions of dollars went into the pockets of unemployed people in this state during the pandemic. 700,000 of them apparently, according to the state, got the money improperly, not through any fault of their own, not through fraud, but by mistakes made by the state. The state now wants the money back from the vast majority of them, in some cases totaling tens of thousands of dollars. One, should they be required to pay the money back? And two, if they shouldn't, what would you do as attorney general to help them? Um, no, I mean, we were going through, we have been going through a really hard time over the last couple of years in the pandemic, and there were a lot of resources that were put in from um, state government and federal government to help people who lost their jobs and were set back by the pandemic. There were innocent mistakes that were made, and no, we should not be clawing that money back from people. If there was actual outright fraud, sure, of course we need to go back and collect that and make sure that taxpayers aren't having to pay out for those purposes. But, um, but, but no, the people for whom there were honest mistakes, they used the money to pay the rent, to put food on the table, we shouldn't be going back after that money. And would you do something as Attorney General to ensure that outcome? Um, yes, that would be absolutely important to make sure that the Attorney General's office is being used to support the people and protect the people. And, and, and that's one thing that I know from my career as a civil rights lawyer over the last 20 years. I've often dealt with the Attorney General's office. I've coordinated with them. We have fought together um, on critical issues to help workers. And there are also times when the Attorney General is called upon to defend the Commonwealth, and, and there are times when that's the proper action. There are some times when you know, mistakes were made, and I think as Attorney General, I need to look at every case and make sure that what we do, what position we take is in the interest of the people. What do you do when you're uh, bound to represent the state and you think the state has taken the wrong position? What do you do as Attorney General? Well, there are a couple possibilities. One is re resolve the issue um, and figure out what went wrong and make sure that it never happens again. Um, another possibility in extreme circumstances, if it's not possible to get resolved, uh, as Attorney General, I would not defend the state in situations where I think the state's not on the right side. I can appoint a special Attorney General who would then um, 
who would then do the defense, and I could join the side of the plaintiffs where appropriate. Shannon, uh, you on your website and the two people you're running uh, against in this primary talk about combating systemic racism. Could you tell me specifically, specifically, what you do as attorney general to do that? Well, I have spent my career fighting not just for workers' wages, but fighting to eradicate discrimination and systemic racism. I have, I have uh, worked to get firefighters and police officers, um, black and Hispanic, hired across the Commonwealth. Um, I have gotten companies to open their doors to hiring black and brown people who they hadn't hired before due to discriminatory hiring processes. Um, I'm taking on Uber right now for using racially discriminatory algorithms, which lead to the disproportionate firing of black and brown drivers. I think we need to be out front seeing how racism is creeping into so many aspects of our society. And I've been a leader in fighting those battles, winning in court and foreseeing what battles are coming. And, and that is the fight that I will take to the attorney general's office. Many people who uh, advocated for serious criminal justice reform on the federal and state level said one of the ways you get there and address the issue of racism is by eliminating qualified immunity for police officers, which obviously shields them from certain uh, su civil suits. The state went about this far in that direction, a minor change in late 2020. Should qualified immunity be eliminated for police officers? There are a lot of things that need to be looked at to make sure that our criminal justice system is fair, is equitable, is keeping our communities safe, but is also doing so in a way that is fair to the people who it is meant to protect. Um, I think one of the issues that really needs to be looked at with qualified immunity is that you don't have enough decisions out there that are actually written decisions which would establish what the law in the area is. I know one of the results of this commission was to, uh, to look at how we can make sure that there are more decisions actually written so that officers know their responsibilities and citizens know their rights, um, and that will help get us closer to um, a, a just system. There, a lot of recommendations came out of, that, um, out of that report and that commission, and the Attorney General's office is going to play a very critical role in appointing members of the commission, making sure we're doing right on reforming criminal, our criminal justice system to make sure that it is, is working for the people. I only have about 45 seconds left. We, there's no other state in the country that exempts the judiciary, the legislature, and the governor's office from uh, public records laws. At least I should be clear, they claim exemption from public records laws. Is that a satisfactory state of the law or should it be changed? No, ab absolutely not. Transparency is key to our democracy, and I will do everything I can to make sure that we have a transparent state government on all levels, because it's, it's absolutely imperative. Um, sunshine is the greatest remedy to make sure that the people are, are involved and know what their government is doing. Somebody else said it was a pretty good disinfectant, too. I think that guy went pretty far. Shannon Lewis Reardon, it's good to see you. Thank you so much for being here. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you so much, Jim. Appreciate Thanks. it.